Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach and today we're continuing on with some AP Physics 1 uh, free response questions and we're looking at rotation, particularly angular momentum um, on this problem. I'm going to skim the problem real quick to make sure there's not any concepts that um, you're not aware of um, that you would need to attempt this problem. Um, they give you the rotational inertia. So I think you should be able to do this whole problem. So pause it attempt the problem and then come back after you've tried it. So I have a one kilogram object moving horizontally with a velocity 10 meters per second as shown above when it makes a glancing collision with the lower end of the bar that was hanging vertically at rest before the collision. For the system consisting of the object bar, linear momentum is not conserved in this collision, but kinetic energy is conserved. The object and bar uh, linear momentum is not conserved. The reason linear momentum is not conserved is there is a f outside force uh, from here that probably pushed to make sure that um, basically there's an outside force on these two things, probably this normal force um, that that caused the linear momentum to not be conserved, FYI. But kinetic energy is conserved. The bar, which is a length L, equals 1.2 meters and a mass of 0.3 kilograms is pivoted about the upper end. Immediately after the collision, the object moves to speed v at an angle theta relative to its original direction. The bar swings freely and after the collision reaches a maximum angle of 90 degrees with respect to the vertical. The moment of inertia of the bar about the pivot is uh, ml squared over 3 and ignore all vision. Determine the angular velocity of the bar immediately after the collision. Okay, so right after the collision, we have um, energy is conserved. That's the only thing we know. So the energy before, the only energy this thing has is uh, 1 half mv squared. It has kinetic energy of this ball. Technically, it has potential energy, but like right after the collision, it hasn't moved quite yet. So I'm not. I'm going to ignore the gravitational potential energy right away because right before the collision, it just has this, which is one half times one kilogram times ten meters per second squared. That's a hundred times 0 0.5. That's fifty joules. Okay. Now after, right after the collision, the energy is the same, and it it shoots off with a one half mv squared. Because this thing still has kinetic energy. But this thing now has some rotational energy. Now this rotational energy, I'm going to leave this 1 half mv squared for now. This rotational 1 half i, I know what i is. i is uh, m l squared over 3. And um, omega squared. Omega is what I'm trying to solve for, right? Now, so uh, I know the mass of the bar, I know the length of the bar, uh, I know the mass of this, but I don't know the velocity this comes off of. Let me see. So what did I say about this thing as it shoots off? I'm curious, how am I supposed to know what velocity came off? I just know it came off at some angle. Determine, okay. Oh, angular momentum's conserved, right? So linear momentum's not conserved because of an outside force from this thing, but angular momentum must be conserved because this thing doesn't cause any torque on the system. This force would not, around this point, would not cause any, any torque. So there's no outside torques on this system. So angular momentum is conserved. So that's what I've, so L before, I have to compute the uh, I omega before. Um, for this, the angular momentum, um, I is just mr squared. So it's m times L squared. And maybe you didn't know that piece of information to do that, but ml squared is the um, rotational inertia of this thing about this point. And then um, his omega is v over l, 
because remember um, omega is equal to uh, omega r is equal to v. So omega is v over r, and the r in this case, which again is distance from the point of rotation, is that. So that L cancels. This is M L V. L after, and and this one you can compute because this is um, one kilogram times L, 1.2 meters, times V, which is 10 meters per second. This is equal to um, 12 kilogram meters squared per second. Okay. Now afterwards. Um, I have the same angular momentum jeez it's tricky because I don't know theta then so L after is equal to the angular momentum uh, oh, oh, oh I see I see um, Okay. Okay. I, I think I, I think I see. I'm doing this setup. It's kind of complicated. So the omega uh, after, um, right after he's lofty at this angle. So his his when I do i omega for the ball, I have to look at the velocity in this direction. If this is theta, this would be v uh, cosine theta. So it would be almost the same thing. M L times v cosine theta plus. Now this thing has some angular momentum because it's starting to move plus i omega. But this i is the rotational inertia of the rod, which is um, uh, one third ml squared, right? So this is equal to m l v cosine theta plus one third m l squared omega. Okay, so let's let's kind of let's let's set this equation. So we know that this is equal to twelve, and we know that all of this is equal to fifty. My unknowns, right, so far is because I'm solving for omega. My well, let's just list all the unknowns. My unknown is omega and v, v, omega, and now theta. So now I have three unknowns and only two equations. So I still can't solve all of these equations. So what else do I know? Well, I do know that it has to go up to uh, it goes up to this 90 degrees. So that's sort of like an energy energy conversion too. Because oh I, I see because what we could say is all th whatever this rotational energy it is it all gets converted to potential energy. Okay, so let's start with its rotational energy one half i omega squared, which we decided was um, one sixth m l squared omega squared. That this rotational energy all has to get converted into potential energy. And so what is this? This potential energy this is l one point two meters. Uh, it would have to equal uh, mgh, mgl, um, and it's the same mass as this one, so that m here cancels and one of the l's cancel, so I have one sixth l omega squared is equal to g. Omega squared would have to equal uh, six g over l, and so omega would have to equal the square root of six g over l. So this is the square root of six times ten divided by one point two. So that's 60 divided by 1.2, what's that, 50? This is 5. Yeah, square root of 50, which is equal to 5 root 2. And the, the units of this are radians per second. Okay, so that's omega. Um, so that's A. That's determined the angle. So you see, the thing is, is now I can kind of substitute and, and go back to the various equation. Now that I know omega, I can solve for v, the linear speed. So part b, I know all of this is equal to 50. So I have 1 half mv squared is equal to 1 sixth, or plus 1 sixth ml squared omega squared is equal to 50. Um, if I wanted to be clear, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I have to be a little bit careful because the, the, these m's are different. This mass and this mass. This is the mass of the ball. This is one kilogram and this is three kilograms. So I have one half times one v squared plus one six times three times l, which is 1.2 squared times omega squared 
Uh, omega was 5, so that's 50. Um, it was 5 root 2, so I square this 50, so that's equal to 50. This is 1 half. 1.2 squared is 1.44, so this is 1 half times 1.44 times 50. Um, uh, point seven. 7.2 times 5, 35, 36. So this is all 36. So then um, make a little room. Um, I have 1 half v squared plus 36 is equal to 50. Subtract that, I get 14. So v squared is equal to 28. Because this is 14, then times 2 is v. So v is equal to the square root of 28 meters per second. And that's 2 root 7. Okay, so that's the linear velocity. Determine the magnitude of the angular momentum of the object about the pivot just before the collision. So for C, just before the collision, um, the angular momentum of the object about the pivot, we just did that up here, L before, it's equal to uh, 12. So this part is C right here, and this is C, because we did that already. And then D, determine angle theta. This is the angle that... Uh, uh, helps me find theta. So I have m, l, v, cosine theta. And this m is one kilogram, by the way, because this refers, this is the ball. Plus one third times m, l squared omega equals 12. So this is one, this is 1 1.2, this is 1 1.2 times 2 root 7 cosine theta plus one third m, this is 3. L squared, 1.2 squared, omega equals, to, oh, what did we find omega to be? Omega was um, 5 root 2 is equal to 12. So that becomes 1, that's 1.44. 1 1.44 times 5 is um, 7.2? Yeah, 7.2. So this is... 2.4 root 7 cosine theta. Now this is just a lot of algebra. Plus uh, 7.2 root 2 equals 12. Um, I don't know. I got to do it as a calculator. <laughs> so I get uh, solving for cosine theta. I get 12 minus 7.2 root 2 divided by 2.4 root 7. And so theta would be the cosine inverse of this. So whatever you get when you plug that into a calculator. I don't have my calculator right in front of me, so that's why I can't do that. All right. Hope you found that helpful. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.